Hi, this is Zed Brooks. Welcome to Logic Pro for Smarties. And this is a bit of a demo of a new feature that's just come out with Logic Pro Update 10.2.3, Non-Destructive Region Normalize. Um, that sounds pretty highfalutin and a bit freaky, but actually it's a really powerful feature and it was way down the list of the things that have been added, um, but are surprisingly good. And I just want to show you how cool it actually is. First of all, though, let's go and actually add that key command uh, into our key command list. So I'm just going up to Logic Pro X menu, key commands edit. Uh, if you do a, um, a search for normalize with the Z, American spelling, you'll see the two new key commands here, which is non-destructive region normalize all and non-destructive region normalize individually. Um, take my word for it, the all is not that useful. It basically just averages them all out. Um, actually, it looks for the loudest um, region and then just sets them all the same. So there's no real advantage to it. Um, the one that is really handy is this one, non-destructive region normalized individually, where it actually turns up each individual region that you have selected. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is let's assign a key command to it. Um, I'm going to go learn by key label, click that. Uh, I've found that uh, a, quite a handy one to use for this is control option command N. So I'm just putting those keys in, turn that back off, otherwise it'll still be in record mode. Uh, if this is assigned to something else, um, it will come up with a little warning message that tells you. Um, in my case, it was actually a shortcut for Evernote, which was a little annoying. I had to go and disable it in Evernote, but um, we're all good now. So now we've got that, here's what we can do. Um, uh, what we want to do is divide this region up into uh, chunks, like the, either phrases or individual words. Like we can see here, that some words are actually quieter or louder than others. Um, we can do it manually. I'm using the right mouse. So I can just do this and right click and then just hit the delete key. I've, my right mouse button is actually assigned to the marquee tool. I've got it set up, so I've got three tools available at all times, which is quite handy. This marquee tool is a really, really good one to get your head around, and you can go through and you can do this manually, um, but I, I'm going to do it a slightly quicker way where we can also use um, strip silence. So I'm going to go control click on my region and go strip silence. It's actually, uh, I've got it on my shortlist there because I've been using it, but um, it's usually down under split strip silence. And it comes up with this, and you can tweak the threshold to get different kind of cuts there. You can set the minimum time to accept a silence, so it can make them shorter or longer. It looks like it doesn't want to get into this one down here. Um, I'll just do that manually. You can see it's done that now. I'll get rid of these little bits. You can kind of smooth things out. Sometimes it's quite brutal, but the, the good thing is that you can basically correct what's what it's done so it's not the end of the world if it sort of gets a bit brutal with it um, things like this you might sort of go oh yeah that's a bit mean the main thing is it actually does a cut between each section it doesn't matter about the accuracy of them to the uh, to what we're doing so we've got that there I'm going to put next one in there right mouse click to get the marquee line in there uh, I've assigned um, backslash uh, for my split by locators, so that will cut that. And now I'm going to select all of those, and I'm going to use my key commands, which is Control Option Command N for normalize. Um, it's it's turned each one of these regions up. It looks really bad because I've actually got my waveform zoom turned up quite high. If I toggle that off, that's what it really looks like. It's not too bad. Um, there's still kind of a little bit of variation. What it's really doing is it's basically analyzing each region and going, uh, what's, the, what's the maximum level of a sample within that region? Uh, if it's 6 dB, yeah, it's minus 6 is the loudest sample, it will just turn everything in that region up by 6 dB. So it goes through and it just maximizes each, each of the regions. And we can see that by, when we look up in the corner here, 19.5 dB for that one, it's turned it up. This one is 21.2, that one's 17.7. Um, they're all different, you know, depending on what you, which one you select. Um, what we can do, though, is if I select all of them again by clicking on the track header, I can go up there and actually click on that region gain. You can see it's got an asterisk there at the moment, and that just is basically saying, 
all the different or multiple regions have different settings applied to them. Uh, and if I click and drag down, I can actually bring those down to a bit more of a moderate amount of gain. You know, you can even take it down to pretty much zero. But what it will have done is evened out the, the levels of all the different chunks. Um, if I turn this uh, waveform zoom back on, you can see it looks a little bit more like what it looked like before. I tend to re record quite conservatively. I keep my levels down to about um, minus 18 RMS is, is the official 24-bit um, reference level. I tend to stick around here, you know, sort of minus 18 to minus 12, you know, maybe up to minus 9. Uh, let's have a look at that. You won't believe your heart. Okay, so it's a little bit quiet. I'll just take those up a wee bit more. I'm just clicking on the, the uh, region gain again and pulling them all up slightly. You. Yep, maybe even a little bit more. You know, you can be, you'd have to be like super accurate with this. It's just getting into the ballpark so that there's like a sweet spot where it's going to hit any um, plugins in the channel strip nicely and it's easy to set them up and you're not going to get any clipping or, or nastiness happening. So that looks about right, I think. Won't believe your heart. If I turn that waveform zoom back off, that's what it's doing. Heart. Yep. Won't believe your heart. Yep, and I'd probably go through and just kind of deal to sort of some of these little kind of gappy sort of um, sounds like it's gating. Um, I also like make sure I go through and like get rid of. Um, then. Um, I actually, I'll show you another trick here. Actually, um, what I would do after I've done all this is I would actually select everything, and I'd go up to my uh, little um, area up here, the uh, the little inspector region inspector, and drop down into more. And what you can see down here is you've got fade ins and fade outs. So if you just basically make sure everything's selected on that that um, track, and just wind up some fade in, and that will and it's in ticks and fade out and that will basically do little fade ins and fade outs on everything that's selected so you avoid clicks and, and weirdness. Won't believe your heart. Um, and I'll take off everything like um, I get rid of like T's, P's and I, I will either um, get rid of or turn uh, S's right down as well and in a lot of cases if it's a backing vocal I may just completely get rid of the S's because the lead vocal is doing the S's um, same with the T's. Um, if it's a lead vocal, I'll probably leave the S's in, but just turn them down. Sometimes like a ridiculous amount, like 18 dB or something. So if that was an S, I'd select it, click to cut it out, and then I'd go in and actually pull that right down on the um, uh, region gain there. And that would do the trick. So yeah, you can be, you know, the good thing is because it's non-destructive, you can undo anything that you do here. You can you can actually go a little bit extreme and then just smooth it in afterwards. So there's no real risk to it. Um, yeah, and that that's pretty much it. So you can see, you can save yourself quite a bit of time by um, using strip silence and then using that key command to even it out. You're not so much going in there and actually just doing it manually every single region. Um, and you can zap out a, a vocal take or a guitar take in, in very little time. So there you go. Um, hopefully that helps you um, and it gives you an idea of what that um, horribly titled non-destructive region normalize actually does and uh, and you can put it to use. Um, if you want to know more, maybe leave a comment on the YouTube page. So yeah, feel free to um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, follow the blog. It's Ed Brooks here for Logic Pro for Smarties. See you later.